Welcome to the Nifty Chicks. In this episode, we chat with Sarah Porter with Hope for Haiti and Christine, one of the incredible artists and founders of the Since Eve Collective. They have partnered to support the Hope for Haiti initiatives, which highlights Haitian women with an all-female team powering the Caribbean's first NFT collection of art pieces. Let's do this. Welcome to the Nifty Chicks. We are excited to have with us today two lovely ladies from the Sense Eve NFT project and in conjunction with Hope for Haiti. So please welcome to the show. We've got Sarah Porter and Christine with Sense Eve. So welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. So excited to have you guys. Um, So Sarah, why don't you go ahead and do just a little bit of background about yourself and and how you got, um, you know, connected with the Hope for Haiti and Sense Eve project. Yeah, definitely. So like you said, I'm Sarah. I'm with Hope for Haiti. I'm our director of innovative philanthropy. And we've really started to su- explore some really interesting spaces um, in the NFT world and also in virtual reality. But just to give you a very brief overview of our organization, we've been working in the south of Haiti for over 30 years now, focused on poverty wow. alleviation. And something I love so much about our mission and the work that we do, and that really speaks to me, is that the majority of our staff and our team actually is Haitian. We have over 150 full-time Haitian staff members, like I said, in the south of Haiti, working in 24 communities. Um, We have a smaller team here in the U.S., which I'm part of. And, you know, I always say this, I am not Haitian. I don't know what's best for Haiti, but my Haitian colleagues do. So we're here to raise the resources and support so they can do the work. Um, So we work with 24 communities. We're focused on providing access to education, healthcare, clean water, and economic development. So really helping create opportunity. And our team has also been responding um, in the short term and the long term to the recent earthquake that hit Haiti in August 2021, which was right in our backyard. Um, So again, part of my role is how can I creatively raise some of those resources so our team, you know, can respond most effectively. That's awesome. Christine, do you want to just give a little background about you and how you got involved in this and and what you're doing with the project? Yes, of course. Um, So I'm Christine. I'm the co-founder of the Sensi Art Collective. Um, so since is an art collective, like I just mentioned, we are currently eight women founders, right? Not by choice. It was just, it just so happens that, uh, the first people to jump in were women and that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Love that. We are all artists in our own ways, graphic designers, musicians, painters, content creators, jewelry creators, but we also have professional backgrounds as software engineers, architects, sociolo- sociologists, and so on. So we kind of have that superhero double identity where we're, for example, me, I'm an architect by day and I'm, I'm, I'm a graphic designer by night. <laughs> um, so yeah, so what we're doing right now with this project is using the NFT space to leverage art, community and tech to start a new conversation around persisting negative perception about women. So these perceptions started uh, way before social media, uh, where art and scriptures were used to influence culture and society. And of course, it all started with the first woman, Eve. So we decided to go back. So we started Sense Eve, due the name of the collection, right? Um, so today we are flipping the script on the lingering, limiting beliefs about women and underrepresented communities. And we are using NFTs to do it. So today, let's say that Eve is shedding the weight of what the world told her about herself. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love that. That is such a phenomenal story for both of you and for both of you to get connected and um, like have really aligned missions. And um, I just, I absolutely love the the story of of how you both got connected. So I'm really curious, um, Sarah, this question is a little bit more for you. So it was actually surprising for me to learn that Hope for Haiti is over 30 years old. Um, You know, I was born and raised in the mainland, and one of the uh, primary reasons why I learned about the organization Hope for Haiti 
was due to the hurricane that hit, um, I want to say in 2016, mm -hmm. was that, right? Yeah. Um, and that's really where, that's what I thought kind of really formed Hope for Haiti. So I'd be curious to um, hear from you, your perspective on really how the organization has evolved through these various kind of milestone events um, and, uh, you know, devasta de devastating events um, for the island. I want to hear from you kind of how the story for Hope for Haiti has evolved over time. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely grown. Um, our founder, Joanne Keener, went to Haiti over 30 years ago before she was the founder of Hope for Haiti. And it really started with one person. And I think that's so powerful what one person can do and how one person can have an impact. She was in Haiti and actually a little girl asked her for money and she asked her why. Mm -hmm. And the little girl responded so she could go to school. So unlike the U.S., mm -hmm. Haiti doesn't have like this strong publicly funded school system. Parents have to pay the fees. The fees can be very high. So that unfortunately leaves a lot of children in Haiti without access to education. So we really started from there and it was starting again. Education is the foundation. So now we have a network of over 24 partner schools in the South. But you also mentioned, you know, these these natural disasters. So over time, we expanded to make sure that healthcare was part of this story. We have a very large infirmary. We provide um, primary care, dental care. Um, our team of doctors and nurses <laughs> even go out into the rural areas and do pop-up mobile clinics because it can be so difficult sometimes to get into the city. Like I said clean water, digging wells, providing clean water filtration systems, and then also investing in Haitian-led businesses that have a social impact because it all ties back. If families have opportunities to thrive and economic livelihood, then they can send their kids to school. But our team has also been on the front line of responding to these disasters. A lot of people remember the earthquake of 2010. And then as you mentioned, you know, 2016, Hurricane Matthew, and now the earthquake of 2021. But we're not going anywhere. And I think that's why we've been so successful. It's one, you know, our team is mostly Haitian and from the local community. They know what they're doing, but they've also been part of the story for so long and they know how to respond appropriately and where the needs are. And I think that's why we become the organization that we are today. And I can't speak highly enough of our team. I mean, they really are some of the best people that I've ever met. And for me, it's so easy to go to work every day to just be in a supportive role because I see what the impacts are. And we also know how Haiti is portrayed. I mean, Christine, you touched on that as well. In the news, it's poverty, corruption, natural disaster, you know, end of story. What I think what's so exciting about this NFT campaign and collection is using art to tell Haiti's story in a different way because we see a different side. You know, when I talk to my team on the ground, that's not the Haiti that gets por portrayed in the news. So I think we can really flip that narrative, you know, on many different levels. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, we, it, I, we we live in we live in Puerto Rico. We're like a you know not too far away from you guys, and you know it's so interesting. Just speaking from personal experience, now that I live here, the image that I think just even the U.S. and we are part of the U.S. has of Puerto Rico is so different than the image I have now that I live here. And so it's it's um I appreciate your desire to kind of you know, flip the narrative, flip the perspective um, and mm -hmm. show that different side. Cause you know, I, I can, I can relate just even a little bit on, on that being now a resident of Puerto Rico. So right. very cool. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So Sarah, I would love to hear how this idea started to, because I mean, let's like, you don't necessarily think about a, a nonprofit organization doing an NFT project. Right. Typically, I mean, when you think of nonprofits, I feel like it's, I don't know, they're kind of like back in like the, you know, they're, they're just school. not very forward thinking. Yeah. Yes. So I love that you guys are doing this. I think it's super cool. And so just how did, how did this idea come about? Like, where did it come from? Yeah. No, I, I love talking about our, our origin story. Um, so actually, a, f a few years ago, to take it even um, 
further back, I got really interested in virtual reality. And I remember actually taking one of my colleagues to this place in Manhattan called VR World. And we were going through the different experiences. And I remember at one point I had to pull off the headset, set it down because my brain actually thought zombies were going to eat me. You know, that's how like powerful the technology is and what it you know does to your brain. But I couldn't get this question out of my mind. Why is the nonprofit world not using this? And how can we use this? We always have this question at Hope for Haiti. You know, we can't take everyone to Haiti. Is there a way to bring Haiti to everyone? And I thought this could be a really interesting solution. Um, so actually, what I love, the developers that we work with, a studio called FXG, we gave them blueprints of one of our partner schools um, in southern Haiti, photo and video, and they recreated this entire landscape and school, and it's all immersive. So that's what I really like about it. When you strap on um, the headset, you're dropped into this world, and all of a sudden you see one of our partner schools, and it looks like the school. It's amazing. You can walk through the three classrooms. You can write on the chalkboard. Um, you can pump one of our clean water wells, and it's also um, a that's social cool. space. So like several users can be in it at once. So it gives us a new way to connect pe people to our work and to our mission. And right yeah. around the time that we were getting ready to launch this, that's when the earthquake hit. And the, the VR team said, hey, in addition to this, we actually know some NFT artists. What if we, we partnered with them? And what if we were able, you know, the sale of those NFTs we're able to support your earthquake response and rebuilding schools because that's been a big part of our response plan and something we're still currently doing. So when you actually walk into one of the classrooms, you can see the NFTs on the wall and you can go up to them. You feel like you're in an art museum and it has a blurb about the artist. I mean, it's really, really cool. Um, it's publicly available on, on SideQuest for those in, in VR that use SideQuest, just type in Hope for Haiti. But then we wanted to take it even further because for me, it was proof of concept. You know, we did. We raised um, a few thousand dollars through this um, NFT auction that we were doing. And I said, you know, what if we partnered with Haitian artists to do a collection? Because I think, again, that authentic connection is so important. That's actually how we got connected to Sense Eve. Um, so we partnered with six Haitian artists on this collection called Hope Endures. So it's generative. So each of the art, each artist has 150 versions of their piece. Um, and we partnered with Snow Crash um, as the platform. So now we have a 900 piece collection. It's available now. And again, for us to use art in this, this really interesting way as we're talking about flipping the narrative. Um, but I also just love the art so much and these artists that are a part of it. Um, we actually were able to do two in-person events so one during um, NFT NYC, we had um, an actual event at Super Chief, and then we just did one in LA um, at Collective. So, and the response has been great. You know, people really love the art, and I think it just again they think about Haiti in, in a different way now. And for me, that's that's one of the goals of this of this project. Right. I just want to mention here: if you are listening to the podcast, you're going to want to make sure to go. Um, either to our website and and you know check out the links or go watch us on YouTube so that you can see this amazing art because um, it really is beautiful and and then it leads me to I feel like this is a perfect segue to um, talk to you a little bit more Christine since you're one of the artists on this project I would just love to hear you know the ideas behind how this got started I mean you gave us a little blurb at the beginning but um, tell us, tell us more. Yes, uh, of course. So when Sarah contacted us after the earthquake uh, for the Open Doors project, uh, it was not a hard decision to make. We jumped right in and we were like, okay, yes. Uh, it touched us right in the heart, right? Because most of us uh, in the collective are Haitian. Uh, me personally, I'm born and raised Haitian and I'm in Haiti right now. So currently uh, living and working from there. Um, so this is one of the things that encouraged us first to jump in. And after that, uh, being able to work with these amazing, amazing artists that we already knew uh, was, again, another push to, to start into the project. And uh, the vision that Hope for Haiti had for this project was exactly the vision that Sensei has uh, in the future for the NFT project. 
So what we're all about, um, so the benefits of being part of the collection is actually being part of an educational session where we actually bring the Caribbean and Haiti also to the Web3 space. So the idea is to bring wealth to Haiti and how exactly like Sarah said, how can we connect Haiti to the world if people cannot get to Haiti? How can we send Haiti to the world? And NFTs is another way to do it. And artist is like, art is the heart of Haiti. Um, so like she said, in the mainstream media, you hear more about poverty, instability, corruption, but words like courage, underdog, heartbeat of art and production in the Caribbean are supposed to be the words that you hear about when you research Haiti, right? And that's what we're trying to do. Um, so our first collection, which is the Sensive collection, uh, represents Eve uh, inside of the Garden of Even. I don't know if you see what we did there, right? So yeah. we even up the field, <laughs> you know? Um, so during our conversations about how Eve should be the concept, uh, so the idea was that Eve would have a newfound acceptance and control over her life choices. Uh, so that informed the design. So from there, we decided to um, play with the posture. So if you look at the posture of Eve, she's a little bit tilted. Her head is a little bit up. And the idea of that is the new light in which she is views, viewed as unapologetic, right? Body positive, self determining and she's here to stay so it's a new um a, a description of what eve is right so the drive also to have inclusivity uh is the um, to it pushed us to play with the different body shapes so we have six different body shapes so we go from thin to bigger we represent all the different skin colors the textures of the hair so we really played with all the layers to bring uh, the LGBTQ community and there uh, to redefine feminine through the diverse mouth and body shapes, right? So shedding the light on various ways that Eve is embodying her self-acceptance. So this is the general Eve uh, a collection. So while our first collection represents all the culture around the world, the Hope for AD and a, a collection, the Hope Indoors collection, brings a more specific focus on the Haitian women uh, representing their role in the society as a pillar, right? So the potomitan, so exactly this one. So uh, in Haiti, we call potomitan, which means pillar, which is the women is the one that carries all the weight of the family and the culture, right? So we wanted to represent that. Uh, so we integrated different elements, so different layers into the art, which are traditional Haitian landscapes. So you're going to see mountain backgrounds. You're going to see urban landscapes, like uh, elements like gingerbread houses, which are the traditional heritage uh, of the houses in Haiti. So Eve is wearing colorful, local, traditional clothing uh, with, of course, her veve. So veve is the way that Haitian evokes their spirituality. So all of that was taken into consideration to bring the special focus collection to the Hope Indoors project. I love it. I mean, it, there's so many, like, it doesn't matter what your style is. You've got so many different options just right here and available. And I just, the art is incredible. I love that it's highlighting um, Haitian artists. It's it's absolutely beautiful. I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with the, <laughs> the, the collection here. Um, one of the things I'm hearing so much about, like, uh, wanting to kind of change the narrative and, you know, um, highlight the beauty of Haiti and the people of Haiti and specifically the women artists part of this. I would love to know, like, if I could just hop into your brain um, and picture, let's say five years from now, what are you hoping um, to, what are you hoping that the image is now with this collection? What are you hoping people are talking about? What are you hoping to get from a roadmap perspective, what are you hoping that that world looks like five years from now if we fast forward? I'd love to hear from both of you. Let's start with you, Sarah. Sure, that's a great question. I mean, I, I would love for people to even just have different adjectives, you know, in their mind when when they hear the word Haiti or, you know, they see something in the news. And if we could just get to this point where Again, I know I keep saying this about the narrative, but so much has been left out. You know, if we could bring that into the conversation and again, when we can use art 
to share the, these stories and people see the natural beauty of Haiti, um, like Christine mentioned, the art and the artisans, the culture, the food, like it's, it's a truly incredible country with an incredible history and incredible people. That's what I want to focus on. And that's what I want to see, you know, five years down the line in the conversation. I love that. And Christine, how about you? Um, I recently uh, was asked that question at a, a panel I was participating in. And the first thing that came to my mind is exponential growth, right? So Haiti, um, every time we talk about Haiti and every time Haitians talk about Haiti, it, there's this um, idea of, oh my God, this is going to take too long because we're so far behind to catch up to the, to the world, to catch up to what's happening right now, let's, let's say to the US, which is the closest uh, a civilized country to us. So to catch up, we, we imagine that we would need 10, 20 years to work in that. But with technology, we can accelerate that and we can grow exponentially. And the idea, like we said at the beginning, is leveraging the Web3 space and also um, uh, the NFT space to be able to bridge that gap, right? These 10 years, these 20 years, how can we scale, put it lower and how can we take it to like five years, two years, three years maybe, right? Um, so what I want to see is exponential growth. I want to see wealth in Haiti. I want to see us thrive. Um, so this is what I'm looking forward to. I love that. Yeah, that I mean, that's just it's amazing. I just have to say also, I love your background, Christine, with uh, you. your your NFTs up there on the wall behind you. And yeah, <laughs> I should have put them a little further right there. Yeah, that would have been more perfect. <laughs> no, it's perfect. <laughs> it looks great. Um, well, I I mean, I think this is just amazing. And I think everybody should go out there and, you know, support and, and by the Hope Enders and the Sense Eve NFTs. In fact, I have to show, I actually have, I have my Sense Eve. I got number five <laughs> <laughs> and I love her. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, so is there, is there anything else that you guys want to be sure to share with our listeners? Yeah, I just want to reiterate, um, you know, all the positive and social impact that does come out of this collection. So not only do the proceeds um, primarily support rebuilding schools in Haiti that were damaged by the earthquake, something I love about blockchain technology is that a portion of the proceeds go back to the artists. And that's also, you know, in perpetuity. So for me, I just think, again, there's like impact on on many levels with this collection. That's awesome. I, I just, I love what you guys are doing. Um, so what is the best way to, you know, be aware of what you guys are doing? Is it Twitter? Is it Discord? What's the best place to connect with you guys? Yeah. So I think um, for us, you know, check out our website, just hopeforhaiti.com. Also, if you go to Snow Crash, um, the collection is featured on their homepage um, as one of their exclusives. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, also just with the handle Hope for Haiti. Um, you know, we welcome new partnerships. You know, whoever's aligned and like-minded, you know, and shares that vision for Haiti. Like we, we want to see how we can work together. Yeah, that's great. Yes, definitely. For us, you can go on sensitive.art. Uh, this is our website. You can find all the links to our Discord or Instagram or Twitter. And you can also find in collections, we have the collection of Open Doors. You can click on it. It will take you directly to the Snow Crash page. So here you have everything on our website. So check us out. Perfect. Awesome. All right, ladies. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. So, Jennifer, I I love that. I just, I think what they're doing is so cool that, you know, they're just highlighting all these Haitian women and giving back to that community. And, you know, they, I feel like, man, Haiti has gone through a lot sure have. and you know, we talk about it in the, in the episode, but you know, we live here on an Island and understand how hard, you know, these storms and like natural disasters can be. But 
I just, I can't even imagine like yeah. being in Haiti and going through what they do. So I just, I think it's super cool what they're doing. I love it. And I love the fact that they're trying to flip the narrative, right? Mm -hmm. They're trying to highlight it's positivity, right? It's all about positivity. And um, instead of the doom and gloom that we're all so used to, and you just mentioned, we, we hear it all the time. So I love it. It's so exciting. It's uplifting. I mean, those two women themselves are uplifting. Like I feel motivated just by listening to them and by yeah. that, that interview. So I appreciate that what they're doing. I appreciate them joining us. Um, it was a very powerful interview for sure. Yeah. I loved it. Um, and I just want to say uh, you should definitely go check out the show notes because it's going to have links to everything, all their websites. And so you can go mint your own NFT. And that is the nifty chicks dot IO forward slash one five three. So definitely want to do that. And, you know, I just want to ask if you guys haven't done it yet, we would really love a review on whatever podcast player you're listening to. Uh, it really does help, you know, more people find the show and, and, you know, spread the word about NFTs. So, okay. And as always, thank you so much for listening to the Nifty Chicks. Always remember, invest in yourself because you are worth it. Please listen carefully to the following disclaimer. Neither the host nor the guests of the Nifty Chicks podcast are acting in the capacity of financial advisors. We wish to remain transparent and impartial to the NFT community at all times, and therefore, the content provided by the Nifty Chicks hosts and guests are intended for general information purposes only. Nothing written or discussed by the Nifty Chicks hosts and guests should be construed or relied upon as investment, financial, legal, regulatory, accounting, tax, or similar advice. Nothing should be interpreted as a solicitation to invest in any cryptocurrency or NFT, and nothing herein should be construed as a recommendation to engage in any investment strategy or transaction. Please be advised that it is in your own best interest to consult with investment, legal, tax, or similar professionals regarding any specific situation and any prospective transaction decisions. You must do your own research when considering investing in cryptocurrencies or NFTs. We are simply sharing our journey with you as we learn more about the world of NFTs. Happy minting.